Okay, since I, I became an entrepreneur in 2017, I have gotten this question a billion times. Like, if every time I get this question, I get paid. I should be a billionaire in dollars and pounds right now. <laughs> People always ask, oh, so should I resign from my 9 to 5 job and start a business? And then, you know, in my country, I don't know about yours, it became a rave in the last 10, 5 years where everybody just wants to be an entrepreneur. In fact, as an employer, when you employ someone who works with you or for you, best believe that the person has another business or has even a registered company on the side. That is how exciting the entrepreneurship space has become. Now, when people always ask this question, they're asking it because first, am I sure I'm going to succeed? They want you to tell them whether they're going to succeed if they make the leap from getting a paid salary every 30 days to starting a business and, you know, making money. So there is no wrong or right answer. If you think it's time for you to resign and start that business, you're correct. If you think, oh, 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 no, 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 I don't think entrepreneurship for is for me, or maybe I shouldn't do that yet, you are also correct. So simple, I'm going to give you 10 ways to know that this is the right time, probably, to start that business. So all you are going to do is to mark yourself 10 over 10 for each of those questions that you answer yes to. And it has to be yes, absolutely. It has to be that you are so sure you have done this, right? For you to say 10 over 10. Okay, so let's go. Many times it is the question of, are you sure, crystal clear, about the business that you want to start? Like, are you so sure to a point where you already have dreamt, you know, seen the name of this company? How it's going to run? Do you even envisage yourself running this business already? Have you put everything in place in that sense to start off this idea? What is your answer? 10? Then let's go. Number two, do you have the right skills to do this business? I remember back in 2009 when I was making the leap from free, uh, from nine to five into freelancing, even though I still had a job. One of the things that pushed me was that I knew that this was a skill I already had even before I got the job, just that I didn't know how to monetize it, which was my proofreading and editing skill right now there were there are other skills you need as a business owner and we're going to go through that in this um you know 10 points but at this stage one of those skills has to be the business of that business if you know what i mean so it must be that this business you have so thought about you must have known the skill either you have learned it from someone you have been in you have worked in a place where this business is done or you have done it yourself, either it's a family business or such. Do you have the skills to carry out this business? What is your answer? Note it down. Number three. Number three. Have you already earned at least a dollar or a naira or whatever your currency is? Have you earned any amount of money, even into the smallest unit, doing this business already? I mean, you work at 9 to 5, so you get your business. Have you tried doing this business on the side, as a side hustle or something, and earn money from it, no matter how small it is? Right? Have you? In my case, I had to use word of mouth to tell people that this, these are things I do, even though I was still working in my magazine company, right? And I, was, and I got a job where I was first paid 21,000 Naira to you know edit massive volumes of work but that didn't matter at the time the volume didn't matter but the money was all rewarded because i mean i could still have had the skill and not had anybody trust me enough to carry it out on their work so have you been able to do a business around this skill about this business you want to start already and earn money from it that's number three is your answer yes or no number four now are you ready for this one? Number four, do you already have savings? Kept aside that if you leave your job and start this business and this business doesn't make any money, at least for the first one year, you will still be afloat. 
Yes, you heard me. A savings amount that can carry you for the next one year after you leave this paid in employment that will help you stay afloat while you are building and setting up this business and running it even if it doesn't make money for the next one year. Do you have that amount of savings? Answer yes or no. And let me tell you something, every business will try you in that stead. I mean, look at YouTube. I started YouTube, my other channel, my main channel, I started my, my main channel on the, in May of 2021, and it's almost two years, and it haven't quite hit the monetization program, you know, milestone, even though I can monetize it through other means. And this is over 150 videos after. Okay, and I'm still excited and even started this channel as well, despite the fact that it hasn't made me any money and I invest at least 10 gig of data, internet data every week to run both channels. That's what I mean. So do you have enough savings to keep you for the next one year doing this business, even if he's not able to earn money yet? Okay, so number five, simple. People who are around you right now, family, friends, associates, colleagues, whoever, lovers, toasters, do they know, do they know you so much to know that you are so passionate about this business idea? I mean, are they the kind of people that can even refer people to you right now to say, oh no, she, even though she, she works in this XYZ organization, but she's very good with this. She's very good with making hair. She's very good with nails. She's very good with catering. She's very good with this. Have they known, are they aware that this thing is something that you love to do and you do really well? Let me tell you something. These people sometimes are your first marketers, are your first uh, referrals. Think about it. So do they know can they see it all over you that this is something that you're consumed about already, even though you still work in 9 to 5? Number six now. Number six. Have you gone for any kind of training, certification, skill empowerment, coaching program, training, whatever it is, in line with this business to help your skill, to help your talent, to help you acquire the right business mindset, the right business skills to run this business effectively? Have you paid any coach? Do you have a mentor? Do you have, do you have you read any book on this same business that gives you the confidence that I can approach this and I will have wise counsel as I go? Have you? That's the sixth point. Mark yourself again over 10. All right, number seven. Cool. If somebody wants to give you money right now for this business, do you have a simple business plan around this business that even if it's two or three pages of business plan, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, uh, vapors, that you can present for the person to read up? Do you have a business plan that you can present to probably a bank for a loan? Can you present any business plan to maybe an angel investor who is really, really interested about investing in this business? Do you have a business plan written, not on your mind, not the one you're thinking about, not the one that, yes, you can quickly develop when you are asked to, that is already written? And please, if you don't know the format to writing a business plan, please go and research. If you ask me as well, I will help you. But remember, it's not for free. Okay, so you must have a business plan written for this business. Do you have it yet? Mark yourself over 10. All right, next. Okay, so this business that you have probably done, you know, made money from a little, had a business plan, all that. This time around, have you gone out to ask people, you know, people who are doing this business, people who buy this product or services, to find out whether there's really a large number of people who are seeking this service or this product? Or let me rephrase it. Have you been able to go out to find out to by research? Actual asking real people. I'm not talking about you know, but even if it's an online business. Have you gone online to check the volume of people through Facebook groups, Quora, Google search, all of that to know whether there's a gap, first of all, when I mean a gap, whether 
there is actually a missing link. I mean, there are people who are offering these services or something related, but there's something quite missing that they are not filling up, that you are seeing as a cash in. Remember what I told you about my restaurant business? We had to do a visibility. Oh, okay, there's food everywhere. People are selling food everywhere on tro in trolleys and restaurants everywhere, but are there people who still seek for something more? And we found that, you know, gap that there are people who actually drive out all the way to eat because there are no quality meals for them to say, oh, okay, if I don't eat at home, I can rely on this. And that was what we cashed in to start our restaurant business. Okay, and it helped us to frame the pricing, the way we package the services and all that. That's what I mean. Is there a gap that you have seen? Then in that gap, are there a large enough people who are seeking that, oh, if, if, if I find better food, for instance, I'm going to bank on it and not bother with, you know, driving all the way and all of that. That's what I mean. Is there a gap you have seen in this service area or product line that you are willing to fill, that this business idea is going to fill? Secondly, is there a large number of people who are seeking, whose pain point is this gap? that they are willing to pay because if you are very few you're going to get frustrated even though you're doing something good you're going to get frustrated and may not be able to sustain it right so have you found that out then mark yourself over 10. next so this number nine is very dear to my heart and it has to do with technology the technology of this business have you learned it have you mastered it so if you're doing a buying and selling business an inventory business shop um, drop shipping business you know actual production business or whatever have you mastered any online tools technology um application software that will make running this business easy and help you deliver value to a lot more people with less ease have you learned the technology that helps people like for instance if you are somebody who sells food are there apps that you have found out that you can use to advertise your food and also you know attach with the delivery services that can make you know delivery seamless for you have you downloaded the app have you tried it if you have downloaded it have you tried it to know how it works that's what i mean if you need a mobile phone to make this app work properly have do you have the right mobile phone to download this app and this is an example do you have a website if you need a website for this business do you have a laptop if you need to do it of inventory data capture and all of that do you have a laptop to help you run this business effectively every business by the way has tech there is a lot of technology to be to be used to make work easier you can't be doing business like in 1960 have you learned gone to learn mastered the technology that will make this business easy for you have you I was once interviewed by a Canadian company for a job and I was amazed at the technology. Like I didn't need to travel there, I didn't need to, you know, think of, oh my god, what am I going to tell them? It was online, but it's not Zoom, it's not any of the things you're thinking about. It's not a special software that helps you interact, answer questions, oh my god, such an amazing tool. I think the name of that software is Spark Hire. Yes. So is there a, there is always a technology for that thing. You see, even if you're, you're, you're frying Akara on the road, there's a technology that will make you sell out your Akara every day. Have you mastered it? Mark yourself over 10. As an addition to that, before I go to number 10, have you also taken this idea to social media? Have you started running your pages, you know, getting people's interest into that business? It's part of mastering the, the, the tech of your business. Have you started creating, you know, developing a personal brand around this business idea that people know you already for? That's part of it, have you? Now, number 10. This part is very, very exciting for me. Have you perfected how you sell, how you tell people about this business? Your pitch, how you say it, your slogan, you know, the way to make people feel compelled to buy from you. Have you mastered it? Have you learned how to sell? It's not about a good idea. It's not about technical skills. It's about selling. If people don't know what you're selling, forget it. The talent, the skill, the expertise, the idea that will change the world will remain bottled up. That's the truth. People are called best sellers, not best 
uh, writers or best whatever or best inventors best sellers for a reason best sellers is about who makes the more the most awareness who make the most noise it is about who tells people more about what it is that they do and why they need it that's the person that sells not the person who has the brightest idea not the person who is the uh, most skilled not the person that man his invention is changing the world mm -mm. it is the person who knows how to sell what he has produced so have you been able to remove shame from and market your business so many people are, are not ashamed to market for other people. They are not ashamed to work for an employer whose business is not even inspiring. They will go all any length to promote that business. They work there and all that to earn their salary. But when it comes to their own thing, oh my God, they'll start overanalyzing. Oh my God, how would they feel if they know I'm selling food? Oh my God, how would people think? Oh, in fact, I need to employ somebody else to be a marketer. It's a lie. You have to be the 100% number one marketer of your brand. If you are still ashamed of making money, this water business is just 10, 10 naira. People will think I'm, I'm broke. That's why I'm doing this business. People will think I'm doing... You're not ready. You're not ready. Look at the, the richest man in Africa. What is he selling again? What does he sell? Cars? What, what? No, tell me. Designer clothes? Tell me now. What does he sell? Sugar. In small packs of 100 naira. Yes. Salt. Cement for for building, juice, tomatoes. Excuse me. He's in the grocery business, but you know, but you're feeling too big. You're too big to do business that will bring a lot of people. No, you're too big. You prefer to sell. What was that again? No, I know it's not you. I'm just you know. I'm just elaborating. You know now. So, have you removed the shame? Have you even told yourself, even if relatives say, let me tell you one funny thing. I had a relative very close to me say, oh my God, after all that she studied and all her degrees, she's selling food. They told me that. And it's, I'm not telling you a cook and story in just 2022 here. So are you ready? Are you ready to be shameless and market to my friend and make will say? Are you? Then if you also mark 10 over 10 on this, then I will say that, congratulations, if you have 100% having gone through all of this, then congratulations, you have actually overstayed or probably you have earned the right to quit your job to face this business. Congratulations. All right. If not, then you know what to do right now, right? You know. Okay. So go do it. Next video is coming up real soon and I got your back, you know, you know, bye.